The Pawtucket episode of Discover Rhode Island is brought to you through the generosity of Steingold Volvo Cars. You've always known Volvo. A car company started over a hundred years ago that's built a reputation on safety, strength, reliability, and fun. And you've always known Steingold. Founded in 1934, and still known as the place for Volvo. There's likely a Volvo in your future, and it will take you on a journey out to eat and out to play, to the beach, to see movies and sunsets. And at the end of the day, your Volvo will take you home, safe and secure. When you're in a Volvo, the journey can take you anywhere. But it should always start here. Steingold Volvo, a historic tradition since 1934. In 1793, Samuel Slater built the old Slater Mill in Pawtucket and started the American Industrial Revolution. But Pawtucket is more than just history. There are a lot of great things going on in this city you'll want to know about. I'm Amy Ponce and this is Discover Rhode Island. In today's show, you're going to discover some of the interesting attractions that draw people and dogs to Pawtucket every year. You'll learn about many delicious things you probably didn't know were made here. And we'll visit with one company that shows how sticking together and doing good work helps American manufacturers keep jobs in the U.S. Let's begin by talking with Mayor Don Grevian. Amy, good to be here with you and we're excited to talk about all the great things that are happening in our city. So. Awesome. So my first question is, tell me the significance of the Slater Mill. We think about Slater Mill, it's where we started hundreds of years ago and where the American Industrial Revolution started. And we're excited about you know, what it's brought to us. It's where the job started um, and now today we are just turning it over to a national park. So we're really, really excited about that. So the opportunity of where we started to where we, where we began and where we are is awesome. At one time, cloth was made by hand everywhere but England. British inventors designed water-powered machines that produced thread and wove cloth automatically. No one was allowed to take those machines or their blueprints out of the country. But Samuel Slater memorized plans for British textile machinery and built the country's first textile mill right here in Pawtucket. This started the American Industrial Revolution. We'll meet one family of legal immigrants who, like Samuel Slater, are helping Pawtucket's textile industry thrive with hard work and good ideas. You'll want to hear their story. The president of Northeast Knitting, our mom, Rosalie DeRosa, really demonstrates how hard work, good decisions, and truly caring about people can pay off for an entire community. Our mom was born in the Cape Verdean Islands. She is the third of 12 children. At the age of 18, she legally immigrated to the United States. She joined her father, helping him work to bring the rest of the family to the U.S. Her father got her a job working for International Stretch, a textile company in the building that we are in today. My mom and grandfather worked extremely hard. They worked at the textile mill Monday through Friday and at Rocky Point on the weekends. After five years of sacrifice, they were able to help the rest of the family legally immigrate to America. Working together and supporting each other, our family was able to buy a home of their own. My mom worked as a machine operator. She did well, and International Stretch promoted her to supervisor. 
She always tried to learn as much as she could about the company, the process, and what it takes to make its products. She worked her way up to becoming a plant manager. In June of 1973, she married my dad, John DeRosa, and soon my brothers and I came along. But after 15 years of working for International Stretch, they suddenly went out of business. My mom was not gonna let this stop her American dream. I remember as a child, the day she came home crying about how she had to say goodbye to her job and to so many friends she had made over the years. But then she got herself together and said, no, this is not gonna be the end. My mom teamed up with Louis Lavoie, one of the executives at International Stretch and others who shared her vision. They managed to raise enough money to buy 15 of International Stretch's machines at the bankruptcy auction. They started a new company called Northeast Knitting. My mom served as vice president and became president in 2001. My parents always believed in the value of a great education. They sacrificed to send all three of us to Bryant University where we graduated with business degrees. We got experience working at Fortune 500 companies for several years. Then my mom asked us to, to make a sacrifice and to come back and help her run Northeast Knitting. Everything that we have today is because of NEK and all the sacrifices our mom made to help us and the community. We're glad to be here. Today, Northeast Knitting employs over 100 people. Some of them were born in the U.S., and the rest, legal immigrants, just like our mother. Our employees work hard to produce the best products that we can. Our products are used in everyday clothing and embedding. NEK is one of the biggest suppliers of material for medical back supports, post-surgical bandages, and also athletic wraps. We also manufacture products that help protect our police officers and members of our military. We've succeeded by doing these things that our foreign competition cannot do. Here at NEK, going from legal immigrants to U.S. citizens, we continue to fight for the American dream. Throughout my 50 years in Pawtucket, working in the same facility, I've met so many wonderful and different kind of people along the way. Working together with them, we've been able to help thousands get their family together and build better lives for them. We've seen them buying their first home, bringing their children up through their college years. Many have retired now, and many are still working towards a better future and building a better community. I consider my employees to be my friends, and most of all, my family. Everyone knows that they can come to me with any issues or concerns at any time. I've tried to be a good leader, advisor, and mentor to them all. I always say to them that this is our company, our home. If you visit a large public building in Rhode Island, there's a good chance its HVAC system was designed, installed, and maintained by Arden Engineering Constructors in Pawtucket. Let's see how Arden does this using state-of-the-art technology. I'm Jeff Potter. I'm the Vice President of Service and Sales at Arden Engineering. Arden's been part of the community and in business since 1954. Arden was started by a gentleman by the name of Peter Arden and he started a mechanical and engineering firm in the city of Providence. We've since moved to Pawtucket and Pawtucket is now where our headquarters is. We provide mechanical engineering and design services, mechanical construction and contracting services, HVAC service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We offer electrical and traffic light services, plumbing, sprinkler, and building automation services. We are the largest mechanical contractor in the state of Rhode Island. Mechanical contracting firm works very closely with general contractors, with building owners and architects uh, in order to bring a project in on time and uh, of course on budget. Our mechanical engineering division is run by a professional engineer. They utilize building information modeling and computer-aided drawing in order to efficiently design spaces in the building 
for construction purposes. Art Engineering has a 33,000 square foot fabrication facility right in Pawtucket. We have quality professional craftspeople who take the engineered drawings and design and fabricate piping systems uh, and other systems, sprinkler systems, and get them ready for the job site. They're then transferred out to the job site and installed by people on the job. Mechanical Engineering uses building information modeling, or called BIM, in order to create modern uh, design for our customers and their buildings. Uh, we're the largest mechanical contractor in the state of Rhode Island. We work very closely with general contractors, owners, architects, in order to construct buildings and spaces in the state of Rhode Island uh, cost-effectively and safely. Art Engineering has a wealth of experience. We have employees that have been with us for decades who have been in the business for decades. We look at the most cost-effective way of installing a project. We work very closely with our owners and our contractors to make sure they understand what we're doing, how we do it, and what the best way is of perhaps building a project. Arden realizes that we are a big part of the community that we reside in. We care about the community. We give back to the community by sponsoring major events in the town and uh, the state such as run walks. Our employees are encouraged to work with charities. We realize how important it is to be a good neighbor and to be part of the community, and we care very deeply about that and we want to give back. Here's something delicious you probably didn't know comes from Pawtucket. Seven Stars Bakery makes their delicious bread, pastries, and sandwiches right here on Main Street. Let's see how. My name is Sarah Williams and I'm the head baker and production manager at Seven Stars Bakery. Something that always attracted me to want to work at Seven Stars Bakery is that everything we do is from scratch every single day. So anything that you go into the store to buy bread or pastry, we've made the night before. And we use local ingredients, uh, we source clean ingredients and organic when possible. Um, we've also over time started to mill our own whole grains in-house, which we use in some of our breads and pastries, which uh, we really love as well. So there's many, many, many steps involved in producing a loaf of bread, specifically at Seven Stars or any artisan bakery. Our process starts three days before you have the loaf in your hand, which is the milling process. So we mill all of our whole grains in-house the day before we need them for the mix. So what we mill today, we bake with tomorrow. So we have two mixers each day, and they come in and mix all of the breads that we would produce for the next day. We have many different kinds of breads that we produce. Some of them are yeasted, which are baguettes, durum, and then all the other breads and croissants that we produce are actually sourdough. Some of the breads go into a cold bulk, which is where they rise in a cold environment, and other breads stay out at room temperature, which then get passed on to the shapers. The fourth step in the process is the shaping process. So we have two to three shapers each day. They divide and hand shape every single loaf of bread. Each loaf of bread gets a pre-shape and a final shape before going into the proof box to rise for its final proof. Once the shapers have finished shaping the, the product, it'll go into a proof box. This is the final stage at which the bread rises and it can take anywhere from six to eight to 10 hours for this to happen. This also happens with our croissants and most breads proof well at a warmer temperature. So at 75 to 80, they rise the best and get the best volume. Our final step in the process would be baking the bread. We have one to two bakers that come in each night and their job is to take the bread that's been shaped and proofed and load it into the oven and make beautiful bread for the next morning. We have a piece of equipment called a loader, which all of the bread gets loaded onto. Once the bread goes onto the loader, the baker will take an instrument called a lom that has a double-edged blade at the end and score each loaf with a specific design on the top. So what makes Seven Star Sandwiches so great is the bread that you're eating your sandwich on was baked just hours before. We also make all of our spreads in-house from scratch. Um, that we use for the sandwiches and we try to source local and high quality ingredients for all of the rest of the toppings. We also produce a few hundred each day and we send them in a later delivery to the stores so it's as fresh as possible for lunch service. The way that we make a consistent high quality product is that we 
take a lot of time to train our bakers and we have an amazing group of bakers behind all the products that we make. We run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's really important that our whole entire team works as a team and can communicate well, and that's something that we focus on daily. We also try to hold team meetings, either at the beginning of the shift or during the shift, to review products and talk about things that look really great that day or things that we could do better for tomorrow's week. It all starts with our hiring and training practices and developing a well-formed team that really enjoys what they're doing. We as a company are focused on continual improvement, whether it be with our baked goods or customer service, to create the highest customer experience. All of the baking that you saw today happens in Pawtucket, but please come and visit us at any of our three locations, Hope Street and Broadway in Providence, or Rumford in East Providence. Pawtucket has a growing craft brewing industry, making some great beer. One place that's not so easy to find, but definitely worth the effort, is Foolproof Brewing. I'm Nick Garrison. I'm the president and founder of Foolproof Brewing Company in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I think what I'd want people to know about Foolproof is that, well, first off, we're a craft brewery based here in the Ocean State in Pawtucket. And when people come visit our brewery or if they're just drinking one of our beers at home, what we're trying to do is just add a little bit of lift to your day. Um, beer drinking has always been about the experience for me. Uh, beer is something that brings family together, it brings friends together. And if Foolproof can do that, uh, I know we're doing our job. The way I started Foolproof was uh, beer began as a hobby for me, as it does for many people in the industry. I was brewing beer at home, uh, in my basement, in my garage, and home brewing. It just became such a passion, and it, you could say it spiraled into an obsession for me. So in order to brew beer, you really just need four fundamental ingredients. Water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. Of course, you can add other ingredients along the way, and we do with uh, certain beers of ours. I think when you come to Foolproof, you, you can expect a really fun, exciting, and unique experience. We've got more than 20 beers on tap. We put unique things on tap that you can't get anywhere else. So every weekend, there's going to be something different. I think the thought we want people to leave with is, wow, that was a really great beer, or that was a great experience I had in the tap room, and we want them to try it again. We don't want them to just buy the beer once or come visit us once. We want them to come to the next event to try the next beer release we're putting out. So our tasting room is open Thursday through Sunday. Thursday, Friday night, 4 to 8 p.m. Saturdays are 1 to 9, and then Sundays are 1 to 8. In terms of staying in the loop with what's going on at Foolproof, we definitely recommend you visit our website, foolproofbrewing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Our handle is at foolproofbrew. If you're a smart homeowner who needs to upgrade indoor or outdoor lighting, you'll go to the lighting experts at Granite City Electric Supply in Pawtucket. We'll meet some of them now. So I'm Leslie Janest. I work at Granite City Electric in Pawtucket. Uh, I'm the lighting showroom manager uh, in the Pawtucket showroom at 690 Narragansett Park Drive. So Granite City Electric is a family-owned company um, that was established in 1923 in uh, Quincy, Massachusetts. So one of the best reasons to visit Granite City Electric is for one of our two light labs. We have a recessed light lab that you can see what recessed lights look like in your home. We have a landscape light lab where you can see what lighting will look like in your yard. So we have hundreds of lighting selections uh, in our showroom on display. So at Granite City Electric, um, we can also show you how to size a chandelier properly. Uh, we can also make sure that you're choosing the proper size lantern for the front of your house. So when you walk into a lighting showroom and there is so many light fixtures in there and it's hard to see between the forest, um, all these different light fixtures. So as salespeople, we're here to help you choose the right size, um, guide you through the showroom so that way you can pick the right size chandelier, pick the right size lantern for the front of your house. At our showrooms, all of our staff is trained to work with blueprints, either helping to design them or helping to read them and figure out what type of landscape lighting or interior lighting needs to be installed. We work with lots of different types of contractors, from light commercial to residential, and we're all serviced through our uh, type of showroom. For our electrical contractors, Granite City Electric offers a lot of unique services that bring better value, we think, to them. 
we like to keep our customers. We have services such as Night Train, which offers free overnight delivery service. So when you walk in the door to a Granite City Electric showroom, you're going to be greeted by sales folks and customer service folks who have years of experience in the lighting industry. And they can set you at ease to help you choose what you'd like for the right price, the right design, in colors and temperatures. We understand how difficult uh, lighting can be. We can bring you into our recess light lab. We can show you the different recessed lights on display, the different color temperatures, meaning warm lights versus cool lights. Customers can see what the recess lights will look like in their home. And we can, again, put those recess lights on a blueprint for them. So in our landscape room, we can show a customer what it looks like to uplight a tree. We have different color temperatures, meaning warm lights or cool lights. So we will have a solution to fit any of your lighting needs. We have 26 locations now across New England and five showrooms. At Granite City Electric, uh, we work hard to please our customers, whether it be our showroom customers or our electrical contractors. We work hard every day to earn your business. Originally founded here in the Pawtucket community, Pawtucket Credit Union is known for its personal service, great rates, and support for community organizations helping people throughout Rhode Island. Let's see how. My name is George Charette, and we're at Pawtucket Credit Union in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Pawtucket Credit Union was formed in April of 1928. It was formed on the principles of people helping people. Pawtucket Credit Union has always been a community institution. We support over 400 local uh, not-for-profit not organizations, and we'd like to show you a few of the organizations that we support on a regular and ongoing basis. My name is Jocelyn White. I am the executive director of Bookstar Wings. So our mission is to put free books in the hands of children. Um, the goal and passion of our work is to really engage children as readers and get them excited about reading. So the major benefit for us is to provide access, especially for families in, um, in different kinds of communities that may not be able to afford books of their own. You know, the high cost of living and so many of the other expenses in many of the communities we work um, really put educational items and tools at the bottom of the budget list for them. And so the work that we do is to really provide continuous access but in a really joyful experience for kids. So we've been working um, with the members of Pawtucket Credit Union for the past 10 years, um, both in volunteering, collecting books, um, as well as supporting us financially as well. My name is Derek Palamani. We're at the Learning Community in Central Falls, Rhode Island. I think the biggest thing I can say about the mission here at the Learning Community is the fact that we believe that all kids, regardless of their zip code, deserve the absolute best education possible. And that's what we do. We try to make sure that our kids have every opportunity that kids in more affluent communities have to open doors and open possibilities and help them defy the odds despite every socioeconomic challenge you can possibly imagine. You know, a lot of times you have investors, you know, and Pawtucket Credit Union philanthropically invests in our school. But what I've always seen about PCU, they really believe in partnership and giving back to the community. So yes, they're going to pump some dollars into our school, which obviously we greatly appreciate, and they've supported the after-school program, they've, they've supported some other initiatives. But they also get their hands dirty and actually participate in things that can really benefit our kids. My name is Darlene Allen, and you are here visiting me at Adoption Rhode Island. Adoption Rhode Island is a nonprofit organization, and we serve children and families, um, particularly children and families connected to foster care and adoption throughout the state of Rhode Island. Um, our mission really is we work really hard to find families for some kids that have been waiting in foster care for many years. We believe that all kids deserve family, and we provide a lot of different support services to help help those kids, help those families stay together, be together, be happy together, um, and get healthy together. Pawtucket Credit Union has been an enormous help to Adoption Rhode Island and we're incredibly grateful. The Pawtucket Credit Union has also helped us with grants and, and actual funding, and particularly around the issue of making sure that youth, the older youth, um, don't age out to homelessness. Those are the types of things that the Pawtucket Credit Union has been able to help us do with lots of teenagers here in Rhode Island. Credit unions are owned by the members, and there is a difference between commercial banks, certainly, and, and community institutions. We are not stockholder owned. We, we don't have to pay a dividend to stockholders, so we, we are able to give back more to the community, both financial support 
and support in terms of volunteerism. All of our employees are encouraged to volunteer at organizations that resonate with them. As, as a community organization, Pawtucket Credit Union has a responsibility to give back to the communities from which it draws its business. We've all heard that many older industrial cities are going to the dogs, but in Pawtucket's case, the dogs are coming here to Friends of Toto. Let's see why. My name is Bob Wheeler. I'm the owner of Friends of Toto in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. The facility operates very much like a kindergarten of sorts for, for dogs. It's a place for them to play and to learn some social skills with one another and still get some rest time too. We decided to open Friends of Toto because we felt that there was a, a need for a place like home, which is our tagline. When we wanted to board our dog someplace, we couldn't find a place that we felt truly comfortable leaving our dogs behind at. We did some research and decided to open up ourselves. I think some of the advantages that Friends of Toto offers are our cleanliness and our safety policies. Not to mention our staff. Our staff is top notch. Most of them are certified in pet first aid and CPR. We do have an outdoor play area. The play area is 3,600 square feet. Astro turf down again with stone dust underneath it so that when the dogs play, again, it's similar to the rubber floor in our indoor play area. It's a little bit easier on their joints. It's also a unique feature of urban facilities that we don't have an awful lot of facilities that have outdoor play area in the, in the cities. So that's one of the things that makes us special. One of the key features of operating a dog daycare is that we take in a lot of different types of dogs. So by virtue of that, we have to make sure that they're safe. And one of the ways we do that is we group the dogs based on their age, their size, and their play style. We do offer some pet supplies at Friends of Toto. Most of our products are from local companies in Rhode Island that make specialty products for our clients. Friends of Toto does offer boarding. One of the things that makes us special is that we have somebody physically on site 24 hours a day. That means that if there's an emergency in the middle of the night, somebody's there to try to address it. The thing that myself and my staff enjoy most about Friends of Toto is really just creating those special bonds with the dogs. It's really fun and interesting to see dogs come out of their shell when they start to socialize, particularly puppies, or maybe it's older dogs that have never had the opportunity to socialize before but are now seeing a, a play environment for the first time and seeing them light up and have fun is probably the biggest joy we take from, from doing this job. Friends of Toto is open 24 hours a day. Our standard daycare hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Somebody is physically there, so if you needed to drop your dog off before 7 a.m. or stay later than 7 p.m., it's certainly an option for you. My staff and I feel like dogs are everything. They, we are definitely dog people. As we've seen in Pawtucket, Rhode Island has lots of beautiful things to see and a lot of businesses and organizations with great products to offer and great stories to tell. We'll show you more of them in the next episode of Discover Rhode Island.